Okay, going to give you a scriptural warning, another scriptural warning against the serious sin of adultery. In Proverbs chapter number 7, a very serious warning against the adulterer, adulteress, and also what a harlot is like too, a prostitute. That's what a harlot is. So I'm going to show you from Proverbs chapter 7. The I'm going to read the whole chapter. It says, My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live as my law, sorry, as the apple of thine eye, bind them upon my fingers, write them on the table of thine heart, say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding my kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger with flat earth with her words. A point I brought up in my other video is that the harlot, the adulterer, or the person who wants to commit fornication and adultery with you, they flatter you. They seduce you with their, their fair speeches and, and flattering words. Don't be deceived by that. You'll see that a lot with a lot of harlots and prostitutes. Verse 6. For at the window uh, of my house, I looked through the ca my casement and beheld, and beheld among the simple ones, I discern among the youths a young man void of understanding. So he's a young man, hasn't been through life, hasn't been through life experience. Uh, probably a guy in his early 20s, who knows. Passing through the street near her corner, he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And look at verse 10. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. You see, the harlot, the prostitute, the adulteress, is immodestly dressed. She dressed in immodest apparel, the attire of a harlot. And, and verses uh, 10 to 20 describe what a harlot is like, gives a good description of what a harlot is, of what they're, what they're like. Verse 11, she is loud and stubborn, her feet abide not in her house. Uh, now she is without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. Exactly. They, they lie in wait for you. They want to seduce you. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me, this day I have paid my vows. Again, she is seducing him. She is uh, trying to bring him in with fair words and speeches. Verse 15, Therefore I come forth to meet thee, di diligently seek my face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of ta tapestry and carved works with fine linen of Egypt. Yeah, they'll be all fancy looking, all that stuff. Watch out for that too. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Yeah, a lot of the harlots out there love to use perfume. A lot of the adulteresses out there love to use perfume. Uh, come, let us take our full, of, our full, our full of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with love. But, but look at this. Look at verse nineteen. For the good man of the house is not at home; he has gone a long journey. So, in other words, the harlot in here, this chapter, she's already married, but her husband is gone, and she brings somebody else over with them. Very, very wicked, and she seduces the young man with her fair words and flattering speeches. Verse 20, he hath taken a bag of money with him, and it will come home at the day appointed. You see, another sign of a harlot is they want to know exactly when their their good man of the house, their husband, gets home. So they can obviously fornicate and commit adultery. Verse 21, and with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield with the flattering of her lips. She forced him, like I said earlier. So to seduce you with her fair words and her kind speeches and all this other stuff. You know, oh yes, I love you so much. You know, that's how, that's how they get you in. That's how they, they bring you in. See, with a woman, they, with a harlot, no, obviously the godly woman doesn't do that, but the harlot, she uses her flattering lips to, you know, go after lustful young men. And men who just aren't, who, who aren't that experienced, who aren't hearkening unto experience. And aren't, aren't obviously obeying the instructions of their parents, as we see at the beginning of this chapter. He goeth after her straightway as an ox to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stalks. Yeah, it'll wreck him. To a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteneth to snare, and knoweth not that is that is for his life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways, and go not astray in her paths. Exactly. Don't let her seduce you. Verse 26, For she has cast down uh, many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Yeah, a lot of big strong men, a lot of you know, men who think they're tough, they've wrecked their lives because of committing adultery with a harlot. 
Look at verse 27. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Wrecks your life. So I wanted to give you that scriptural warning against the sin of adultery. And a very, very serious warning. Proverbs 5, 7, 6, and 7 all give really strong warnings against the serious and wicked sin of adultery. And how the harlot will, will flatter you, she'll seduce you with her fair speeches and kind words. But then when you actually get with her, she reveals her true colors and she wrecks you. Wrecks your life if you're a young man out there. So I wanted to give you that. So that don't be deceived by the harlot and don't be... Uh, getting into adultery it is a wicked sin. Again, Leviticus 20 verse 10 uh, said that adulterers under Leviticus 20 verse 10 under the law of Moses, adulterers got the death penalty. That's how serious of a sin God saw adultery as. Uh, so obviously we're not under the law of Moses today, but it just shows how serious the sin was. So, and is still today. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.